I just use used motor oil. Who cares? Uh, I'm a cheap son of a bitch. Welcome back to the workshop, you titans of tapping. Today, we're gonna go over the 60 piece tap and die set from Pittsburgh. It's from Harbor Freight. It cost about 40 bucks. We'll go over all of its features and what it includes. After that, we'll head over to the workbench. We'll tap some steel and some aluminum, see how the taps perform. After that, we'll go uh, save a few studs and bolts with the dies, like you would in a project. And at the end, we'll determine if this thing is trash or if it's worth your cash. Let's get started. All right, when you buy the set, it comes in this plastic case here. It's got a living hinge around back and a couple of plastic latches up front. Now, these will not stay closed all the time, so don't go carrying it by this handle. Never do that. I just carry it flat, forget this exists. Now, let's pop her open and see what's inside. Okay, inside here we get a tap chart. I threw that in there. Link is in the description. You get a piece of foam to help keep everything in place and a piece of wax paper to keep the preservation oil under control. All right, you get 27 dies and 27 taps. You get these six accessories up here. Uh, they're just tap holders and die holders and uh, that rounds out your 60 pieces. An interesting inclusion here is the 1 8 inch uh, pipe die 1 8 by 27 threads, that's a tapered die, and the matching tap. All right, it also includes a couple of these thread combs here, and here's how you use them. Let's say you have a bolt and you don't know the size. You can come along here and figure out the approximate diameter. We can see that this one's about 5 16 but we don't know the thread count, and we don't want to go jamming it into the die. So we'll plot our little thread comb here. Okay, so what these little blades are, is there different teeth counts and they have the teeth numbers, uh, threads per inch, right on the combs. So all you gotta do is take your bolt, figure out which one it is. So here's 14, that's a no-go. Let's go to the next one, which is 18. That's a perfect mesh. So now we know this is 5 16 by 18 threads. A better way to do it is check my link in the description and get this thread checker thing. Comes with all the different sizes, metric and English. I'll do a video about that. Here's your die holder. We can take, uh, you just take any die you want, stick it in here, align it with one of these dimples here and the screw, and screw it in until that locks it in place. Okay, now we have a die in place and they give you a little flathead screwdriver to screw it in. And then here's your tap holder. You just open that up to whatever size you want, approximately. And a little square piece will fit down in there. So what we're gonna do is just open this up, clamp that down. Now you got a handle for your, for your tap. You also have a tap holder for some of your smaller sizes. Put the down there, tighten your little chuck, pop your handle through here. Now you have a handle for some of your smaller sizes, a little less cumbersome than this giant thing. Okay, that's what it includes. It's got metric and SAE sizes. So let's go over and tap some holes, see how she works. In our previous video, we drilled some holes using our 115 piece set and we drilled them with the tap in mind. So we drilled a couple holes at a quarter 20 size. We looked at the chart here and we saw we need drill bit size number seven. And we also did it for seven sixteenths by 14 threads. And we used drill size U. I drilled two of each size in aluminum and steel. So let's go tap some holes in these. Let's get our quarter 20 out. I have a hard time fat fingering these out. So sometimes I use the included screwdriver to just pop the one I want out. Here's our quarter 20 tap. And speaking of taps, why don't you tap the subscribe button if you like hanging out with me in the shop. Okay, here's the collet we're gonna stick it in. I'm gonna tighten that down. We'll stick our T-handle through there. Now that one's ready to go. And we'll grab our 7 16 by 14 thread right here. And that won't fit in that smaller collet. So we'll stick it in this uh, handle, tap handle. And I'll show you how that works. Just put that in here. And this side, this side uh, turns and grabs the tap. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up. Now we've got both of our taps and handles. Let's put our aluminum piece in the vise. We'll grab our quarter 20 inch tap and some oil. 
this is literally just an old zoom spout that I yanked the tube out and filled with motor oil when I did my last oil change. I just use used motor oil. Who cares? Uh, I'm a cheap son of a bitch. So let's go ahead and lubricate our hole here. And you want to use lubrication so your tap slides through easier. It makes it makes the cutting easier and it makes the tap last longer. I'm trying to keep it straight up and down while also applying moderate pressure as I turn it. So we're going to turn until we feel a lot of resistance. Then we're going to back it off until we feel a little crunch. Then we're going to go forward again. Each time you're going forward more than the last time. A little crunch. If you go crazy, you'll break your tap. Okay, these don't seem to be as sharp as taps I've used in the past. Okay, we're all the way through. There's our quarter 20 hole. Now let's do our 7 16 by 14 hole. Go ahead and lube up the tap. Okay. You might be able to hear the chips on this one better. So we're gonna go forward. Break the chip. Okay, we're all the way through. And you'll end up with a bunch of chips on your tap like that. And you'll just take your air compressor and blow that off. Blow the schmoo out. Let's take a look at our threads. They're not bad. The larger tap was way better than the smaller one. Now that could be a function of there being more room for the crap to get out of the way as you're cutting. Because aluminum is kind of goopy. It, it's soft and it bunches up and gets stuck. So maybe the larger one did better because of that. Now let's go do the steel. Okay, tap is lubed. Start with our quarter 20 hole. All right, we're finally through. Now let's do our 7 16th size. The 7 16th tap is much sharper or much better than that smaller one. It just goes right through there. So I don't know if that's an inconsistency in the set or what. Because we're through already. And let's take a look. Here's our larger hole. Looks nice. Here's our smaller hole. Smaller one was a bear. Let's try a bolt in our newly formed holes. Right, let's try our quarter 20 inch hole. It's going in, but it's not finger loose, or it's finger loose, but it's a little rough. Okay, quarter 20 hole is good. Let's try our 7 16 14. 
And I don't have a, I don't have one of those handy. So we have to actually just use our thread checker directly. And that is smooth as anything. So the 7 16 works perfectly. Let's check the steel. There's 7 16 14. Smooth as anything, works great. Now let's check our quarter 20 on the steel. Okay, this isn't bad, but it should be cleaner than that. And I don't see any damage on the tap that would cause that. All right, for our next test, let's say you have a unique kind of bolt. You know, let's say it's an automotive type bolt and it has special features, uh, a weird shoulder or something of the like. Or let's say you have an antique bolt like this and it's corroded. And even the threads, let's see if I can show you. Even the threads are a little knackered here and there. Been bashed, not starting off so good right here. So that's where the dies come in place. Let's see if we can save these threads. So we'll use our little combs, we'll figure out what size it is. Okay, the 16 comb fits really well. Okay, so we've got our 3, 3 8, 16 die here. We've got our holder. And the side with the writing has a taper. So this is the wider part. You want that to go on the bolt first. So I'm gonna put the writing face down. Okay, and I'm going to let our set screw go right into that little divot. We'll grab our screwdriver from the kit and tighten that up. All right, so we put the die face down because on this side we have this little iris mechanism. And it opens and closes like that. So we're going to use that as a guide on our bolt. So we've lubricated our bolt. Put our guide on here. We could tighten down these little, these little guides. Now we'll just we'll back up the die until we find the beginning of the bolt. Okay. Now we'll just use the same principle. We'll go back and forth. All right, we blew off the threads. And you can see it looks pretty good. Now I left this little part here untouched. So let's go ahead and try our 3 8 nut. Pretty smooth. And it doesn't get crusty until we get to the untreated part. So that's how you can save a bolt. We could run it up a little further up the shoulder. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, there's our threads cleaned all the way up to the shoulder. Shard sure nut. Now we have a brand new condition bolt. Those threads are perfect. And we can reuse that in our project and keep the original bolts. So that's kind of cool. Let's say you have a different problem. You have a special automotive type bolt like this and the threads are knackered. See those threads there? You don't want to go screwing this into an aluminum block or you'll just gall it out. So let's figure out what size it is. This time we'll use my thread checker, which I recommend. I have a feeling this bolt's gonna be metric. So we'll grab one of these dark ones since metric is of the dark arts, M8. Okay, that's M8. Here's our M8 by 1.25. I'm gonna put this one on backwards. I'm gonna put the funnel shape towards this side so I can see better what I'm doing. I'm not gonna use those guide 
these things don't seem to work very well in practice. So I'm gonna go ahead and open them up and just ignore them. Okay, if you look closely, you can see the boogered spot right here on the threads. Let's go ahead and put a little lube on here. Let's see if we can clean those up. And we'll just run it right up to the shoulder. There's our little knackered area there, but you see it's cut, it's cut anything that was hanging over into the troughs. This bolt would be perfectly usable just like that. Okay, if we wanna check our thread contour, we'll use this 1.25 on our little included thread comb. And let's check, let's find our goofy spot. It's right there. And then we can slide our comb along it and we see that there's no interference whatsoever. So those threads have been repaired. You could reuse this bolt. You don't have to run down to the hardware store. That was a, you know, two minute operation. Bolts fixed. Let's wrap this video up with a little pros and cons session. Now, some of the pros are, it has a great organized case that keeps everything in place. The value for money is phenomenal. $40 gets you all of this. It's a great little starter set if you want to start having taps and dies. And over time, you can start replacing the ones you use most frequently with, you know, better store-bought ones at nine or $10 a piece. So if you only use one, just replace it with a high quality one once it wears out. But that still leaves you with a kit with a wide variety in case you come across less frequently used bolts. Now, the most important thing about this kit is it can save your ass in the middle of a project. It can save you from galling out threads on an engine head or a block. It can, save you, it can save you a bolt, which can save you a trip to the hardware store, or maybe the hardware store doesn't frickin' have it. I mean, that's, if it saves you just once, it's paid for itself. Now, some of the bad points are, is it may not last as long as a high quality tap set. And a lot of people will say, buy once, cry once. But sometimes the choice isn't between buying this or a higher quality set. Sometimes the choice is between having this set or no set. The other negative is, you know, it didn't have the sharpest quarter 20 set. And I don't know if some of these other ones uh, aren't as sharp either, but the 716 14 was perfect. And I, I suspect that most of them are just fine. And some of the accessories I recommend with this kit to make the most use of it is the drill bit set from my previous video and this thread checker, which I'll make a video about soon. I'll put a link in the description. Okay, let's talk about storing this. Now, a lot of this is raw steel. We can see that this one already has a little bit of corrosion on it. It's been in my shop for probably a year and my shop is evaporative cooled. So to prevent that, let's take a little bit of this plain oil here, it's just spray oil, and let's give everything a little coat. Then we'll put our wax paper down. And we'll put our foam in place to hold everything down. And finally, put our tap chart right here. All right, you guys, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me today. And if you do like hanging out, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. We recently went over 160 subscribers. That's awesome, guys. It's growing quickly. Let's all hang out and look at some tools.